the Olympics just around the corner, World Athletics has banned two female athletes from competing at the showpiece, following the same rules affecting Casta Semenya relating to naturally high testosterone levels. The Namibian pair of Christine Mboma and Beatrice Masilingi have become the latest woman to be barred. Joining me now to discuss this uh, is uh, Namibian Sun sports editor Limba Mupetami. Limba, thank you so much for your time. Um, let's just get straight into how uh, the two athletes felt. I mean, they were unaware that they had unnaturally high or naturally high levels of testosterone uh, when they found out. And, and I believe so was the um, Namibian Olympic Federation. Yes, of course. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Um, before we start, I think this is a very deli delicate and extremely difficult situation. Of course, uh, this kid's uh, 18 years old, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, at this moment, uh, if uh, you're following sports, you'd, you'd realize that uh, at that age, um, you don't really understand some of the things that are going on. You know, yes, of course, uh, they have released a press release, uh, a press statement, sorry, to say that they didn't really know that uh, some of this, this type of rules existed. However, I think at this point, uh, if you're a coach and as well as the National Olympic Committee, you should have known, you know, what they were putting these girls uh, up for. And uh, as I said, a very delicate, very, very difficult situation. And uh, I have spoken to the girls. Um, and obviously, with the type of reporting that we do, uh, we try to be very sensitive as much as possible mm -hmm. to try and protect these very young uh, sprinters as well. So, um, of course, uh, they're very unhappy with the fact that they cannot run in, in, in the category that they, uh, you know, are very, very, very good at. We, we have seen the way Christine Bomber runs. We have seen the way Beatrice uh, Masalini runs as well. So, obviously, from their camp, very disappointed people indeed. Yeah, so that's what is happening at this moment. I mean, these, uh, you know, as you mentioned, they're two 18-year-olds. Christine Bomber remarkably ran the seventh fastest time in history, just last week, um, in, in the 400 meters. Uh, both of the medal contenders, they must be mm -hmm. absolutely gutted to not be able to take part in their preferred uh, race. But uh, I believe there is still some hope that they'll go to the Olympics uh, running in the shorter distances, the 100 meters and the 200 meters. Yes, um, having spoken to Hank Botta, that of course is the coach, I think at the moment they will try to focus on the 200 meters, uh, which they're also good at, you know. So at this moment in time, um, I think they would most probably produce, um, you know, the time that they have been producing at the moment, the 400 meters as well. I think a lot of possibilities, a lot of uh, uh, hope lies ahead for these two girls. So the fact that they have been pulled out of the 400 meters, I, I don't think we should ponder too much on that. I know it's a disappointment for a lot of people, but what does it help if you're fighting a, a governing body like World Athletics at this moment in time? You know, I think they should look ahead and just focus on, uh, on the 200 meters. And I mean, in terms of the uh, Namibian population, what was the general uh, sense once the news broke that uh, their two rising stars have been pulled from their favorite uh, event at the Olympics? Uh, at this moment, um, I think the whole world is uh, uh, grappling with COVID-19, you see. So when these two girls came, um, you know, when they, when they arrived, rather, let me say, on traffic field, I think that sort of gave a lot of Namibians, a lot of Africans, and I think a lot of people... You know, just all over the world, just that little hope that there is something good that is happening in the world at this moment in time. So obviously, uh, right now, a lot of Malaysians are disappointed. People who have not even been following athletics at this moment, uh, you know, there is a conversation about the situation that is happening with Beatrice, the situation that is happening with Christine. And we should also remember that these two athletes, it didn't actually start here. You know, this type of, uh, with the World Athletics saying that, uh, uh, athletes with DSD shouldn't compete in the 400 meters and up and so forth. It didn't start here. Mm. It started with the likes of Custis and Mayer, you know. It started with the likes of, uh, right now, with Margaret Wambi, Wambi from Kenya, mm. you see. And let me just mention this. You see, when these things were happening to the likes of Custis and Mayer, we as Africans, we failed ourselves because we thought this is a South African problem. You know, this is a Kenyan problem. Mm. So that's where we failed. And now as Namibians, 
we failed ourselves so much because at that time we didn't have this type of athletes. And yeah. now we sit with this problem, you know. Yeah. We should have stood up and said, we need to fight for cancer as, as Africans, Absolutely. as individuals. And that's what we didn't do. Yeah. And yeah, now we are... We, we, it, it, it really is a, a very sad case. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, uh, and uh, my director's yelling in my ear, so let's leave it there for now. But um, a very important conversation, and, and uh, I'm certain it will continue. Uh, two athletes, Christine Boma and uh, Beatrice Masalingi, barred from running as they are uh, athletes with DSD difference of sexual development, like a Casta, like a Margaret Wambui, like a Francine Nyon Saba, who, by the way, all three won medals at the 2016 Olympics. They've been barred from running in the 800 meters as well.